Well, following on what Anne, what, what Anne ended on, which was a, a photograph by a contemporary photographer by Adam Foose, here we have uh, a photograph by William Henry Fox Talbot, who was the first to make photograms. Uh, this is one of his uh, one of his best known photographs. It's of the, the latter. It's a plate from the, the Pencil of Nature, which was the first photographically illustrated book that he published starting in 1844 and going to 1846. It's the only plate in that book that has uh, has figures in it. And uh, he went through great, great lengths and, uh, uh, to, uh, to achieve this. He writes in his, in his text for the Pencil of Nature, portraits of living persons and groups of figures form one of the most attractive subjects of photography. And I hope to present some of them to the reader in the progress of the present work. Well, this and turns out to be the only uh, portrait subject in the Pencil of Nature because the so they came to an end after 24 plates instead of his projected 50 plates. But what, it, what, it, what this particular print shows with its, its real superb tonalities is the, the light that he was able to capture the, <coughs> the sun so it breaks the, the figures and the ladder against the, you know, the wall of the, the hay, hay loft at uh, Lake Hawk Abbey, which was his home. You see the triangular composition of the figures and the ladder going into the loft. A very complicated composition to achieve. Um, and he was he, he took some advice from uh, from Henry Collin, who was a fellow photographer and, uh, and a miniature painter, who advised him as to how to how to angle his camera. The figure on the lower left is Nicholas Henneman, his trusted assistant, um, a Dutchman. Who, uh, who went on to become a photographer in his own right. Um, in this case, the, the fact that you can see the buttons, the, the shining buttons on the back of his, uh, his coat is, is indicative of how sharp this particular print is. Um, it is you know, arguably one of his probably best known images, and this is just about the best print that I've seen. Gustave Le Gray rode past a boulder in the forest of Fontainebleau. This is dates from 1852, when, uh, or a bit earlier. But it's uh, among Le Gray's first large format uh, photographs uh, that he made uh, in this in this historic, um, art historically uh, famous forest. Uh, he was following the footsteps of the painters who had been there before him and who continued going after him. Uh, having been trained as a painter, he, he really understood um, what, the, what the proper locations were to, to, to photograph uh, once in the, in the forest. And here he selected this otherwise nondescript boulder uh, surrounded by trees and underneath this, uh, this uh, cluster of trees where the light was constantly shifting, uh, as you can imagine with the leaves moving. Um, the, you don't get much tonality in the, in the leaves because at that time it was very difficult to capture capture green light from the trees on um, the kind of film they were using or on the, or on the kind of on the, 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 the paper negative that would be used. Um, it's a salt print from a paper negative and uh, it's, uh, it's just a magical picture. It's just, uh, you can imagine it being rather, a rather haunted uh, a haunted uh, magical part of the forest. Roger Fenton, uh, cloud study in, in Great Britain. This is a photograph that was part of the Rubel collection, which is now at, at the Metropolitan Museum. Um, it's a salt print from a glass negative in this case. And here again, the light, which is really what it's all about, it's the, the sky. He's managed to capture uh, the light permeating these storm clouds overhead. Um, you see very little detail of the ground below, but if you, if you look very carefully, you can make out these little white specks, which are under a magnifying glass on the you can see they are sheep that are grazing in the, in the meadow. But what I love about this picture is the fact that you can actually get the impression of moving clouds. It has a cinematic, you feel the cinematic progression when you're staring at this picture. 
um, it seems to like the clouds seem to go right over your head as if you're in a, in a, in a, in a moving automobile going through this uh, landscape. But it's, uh, it is quite magical. Another Roger Fenton, which is part of the Rubble Collection, which is now at the Metropolitan Museum. It's the Reclining Odalis, who, this is of the series of, uh, of about 50 that uh, Fenton made of this, uh, uh, from this, uh, these Eastern subjects that he photographed in his studio in London. Um, these are all from Fenton's fabled uh, gray album, gray paper album, as is the one from, uh, from uh, The Clouds. This was an album that came up at Christie's London in the, mostly in the 1970s. And uh, it had some of Roger Fenton's finest photographs, most of them unique. In this case, this, uh, this woman is just lying on this carpet, which seems to be a floating carpet. It seems to be levitated. You have no sense of weight of that thing. Um, and she's, she has this book uh, and this, uh, this, this drum, and uh, has all sorts of suggestions, uh, all sorts of eroticism in this picture. But the, it really is the feeling of, it's like it's a flying carpet. And you feel and you see this woman sort of just floating in a, in a dreamlike vision. circle of the French sculptor Charles Seymour, who was active in the 1850s. Um, this is an album that has, that is, is dated from about 1856 to 1860. Um, it's a, what we're, the, what we're looking at is a salted paper print from a, uh, an enlarged collodion negative. So you're seeing this, uh, this, this provocative uh, study, uh, which is sort of big, with, with, which has sort of a veil on it. You see that she's she's draped in a veil, but there's there's also this hor these horizontal lines, which at first you can't quite figure out. But I have been talking to conserv conservators, and principally Mark Osterman of the, of the Eastman House, who was uh, able to explain to me what this is, um, is that it is. The photographer obviously had to use a smaller format camera to capture the, the, the figure that he wanted, um, which was, we assume, intended as an artist's artist study. And then he would have made an enlarged negative from that and somehow didn't quite understand the fact that the, temp the chemistry had to be a certain temperature to get it to come out smoothly and it was probably uh, too cold and that would cause the collodion to sort of congeal or to cause <coughs> people these striations, which, um, which I guess a, a professional photographer would consider a flaw and would throw it away. But in this case, whoever this photographer was did not, and then mounted it and preserved it in this album. And so it, it has this, this mystery to it. Um, it's, a, it's quite a large uh, salt paper print about this size. And, um, and it has a, again, it has just a, a, a mystery that's, that's really, the, the more you look at it, the, the, more you, the more you're drawn into it. And going to the 20th century, this is uh, Frederick Evans's The Sea of Steps from 1903. It's the, the steps to the chapter house at Wells Cathedral in Wiltshire, England. And it's his third attempt to capture this, uh, this view, which he had seen on previous uh, visits to Wells Cathedral, which is one of his favorite places to photograph. Um, Evans being known primarily for his cathedral architecture. And he was working from about 18, 85 to about 1915. And this was right in the middle of his career. Really, the, he, when he, he called it the Sea of Steps. And when you look at it and you hear the title, it makes perfect sense. Because those steps, they really are, they seem to be moving. They seem to be tumbling right out of the picture plane, right into your face. 
And uh, um, of course, it's, you can see it much better in the original than you do on a slide on the screen. But it really has motion to it. it and uh, this is a picture that Evans himself considered finally his, 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 uh, his, his crowning achievement. And he was heralded in, in his day for, for this, this masterpiece of his. And, um, and in this case, I think we can say that this, this photograph of Frederick Evans is, um, really is his masterpiece. You can't say that about too many other photographers. There's one single piece that everybody knows. And this is the piece that's sort of become one of the, one of the great architectural photographs of the 20th century.